This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Let's go through and have a look at depreciation then, shall we? Uh, nothing too much to go through there and cover. Uh, I'll just point you in the direction of where bits and pieces may get more complicated at a P2 level as opposed to what you've seen at F7 and F3. So, you know, you've been doing depreciation for a long, long time. You'll be glad to know it hasn't changed. Okay, get in. Brilliant. Fantastic. Uh, you've got two methods, straight line, reducing balance. Uh, the bits that I want to point out, uh, it, depreciation starts when the asset is ready for its intended use. So that's a picky little bit of the standard. Uh, so when it's ready for use, not when it is physically being used. So we depreciate it essentially from the earliest date. Okay. Uh, if you change the estimate, so whether that's a change to the method, uh, i.e. straight line reducing balance or reducing balance to straight line, or whether you change any other of the estimates, such as the residual value or the percentage on the reducing balance or the number of years over which you are depreciating the asset, then that is an adjustment that is applied prospectively. So under IS8, you apply it in the year of change and then keep that into future years. Okay. How do we go through and adjust for that change in estimates? Well, you apply it to the carrying value of the PPE at the date of change. So work out what the carrying value is when you decide to change the estimate and then apply the new estimates. Uh, the other little bit, again, uh, maybe seen in some of the, the, the objective test, multiple choice questions that you get now in F7. Uh, but the key bit there is that if you have a complex asset, so maybe things such as an aeroplane, uh, a ship that has lots of different component parts to it. Uh, remember, you depreciate each of those component parts separately. So for the aeroplane, you would take the engines and depreciate them over, say, 10 years. Uh, you would take the fuselage, the main body of the plane, and maybe depreciate that over 20. Uh, the interior of the plane, maybe you would go through there and depreciate that over five years. Okay, so allocate the cost of the component parts and depreciate each component part separately. May crop up in P2. Personally, based on experience and past exams, I think the change in estimate is more likely to appear. So what have we got here? Uh, it says here, calculate the amounts to be shown in the financial statements of Ecuador. So again, SFP, profit or loss, OCI, anything else, uh, Statement of change in equity, statement of cash flows, if you so wish. The main focus is SFP, profit or loss, because that then feeds in numerically to what you tend to see within the group accounts question in question one. Okay, uh, So it says Ecuador bought an item of property, plant and equipment for 25 million on the 1st of January 2012 and depreciated it over 10 years. So is that two and a half million per annum? On the 31st of December 2014, uh, the asset's remaining life was estimated as five years. Okay, uh, So we then need to depreciate the carrying value at December 2014 over uh, the remaining life, is it there, of five years. Okay, So we need to go through there, don't we, and work out the carrying value. So what we have there is that the cost was that there, I think it was 25 million, wasn't it? Excellent. So the cost was 25 million, which was on the 1st of the 1st, 2012. Uh, the depreciation was equal to 25 divided by 10, which is there is 2.5 million per annum, isn't it? Okay. Uh, the carrying value that we want is at the 31st of December 2014, isn't it? So that's 12, 13, 14. So is that three years worth of depreciation? So the carrying value is 25 less three years at 2.5. Uh, so 2.5 times three, 2.5 times three, 25 less 7.5 is 17.5 million dollars okay that is the carrying value 
So what we need to go through and do now is we need to put that into the financial statements, don't we? So we're going through there and looking at the SFP and the statement of profit or loss. In the statement of profit or loss, we have the depreciation, don't we? Which is your carrying value divided by the new remaining life. So my depreciation is now 3.5 million dollars. So is this there now for the 31st of December 2015? And then in terms of the SFP, the property, plant and equipment is the 17.5 less the 3.5. Does that work out at $14 million? Okay. So on the SFP, you need to get a figure of 14. Uh, the depreciation is 3.5. If you're thinking about it from a group's perspective, so imagine the parent has this going on within their financial statements for the year, then whatever PPE figure that is consolidated as part of the parent, you would need to reduce it by the 3.5 because that's your new depreciation charge for the year. And then don't forget that depreciation charge is going to go through the parent retained earnings. So this depreciation figure here would go through your group retained earnings, isn't it, in working number five. Okay, And that would then make sure that you've reduced the PP at the top of your group SFP by 3.5, and then you have made a corresponding debit entry within the retained earnings part of equity. Okay, so your SFP should still balance. Okay, so just be aware. We, we've looked at that previously. We've seen that in F3. You've seen it in F7. We see it in P2, but the way it gets more complex in P2 is that the numbers or the standard doesn't change. It's the style. And what happens there is that that will happen within the parent's books within a group accounts question in question number one. Okay, so you need to make sure that you adjust the parent's PPE and adjust the parent's retained earnings. There we go. Other than that, uh, that's it pretty much done in terms of property, plant and equipment. I will see you all next time when we begin to go through there and look at is it borrowing costs.